to talk about uh, wave and optics. So this is a um, very interesting topic and it's very easy. And I think comparing with uh, electromagnetics in the optics and the wave, um, the physics is simpler than the, uh, the electromagnetics. And to understand the optics, um, we need to uh, learn something about the wave and oscillation. Because after Maxwell's equation, um, scientists know light is one of the wave, EM wave, uh, electromagnetic wave. So um, if we want to understand the traveling of the light and the interference of light, diffraction of the light, we need to know the interference of the, the wave, diffraction of the wave, and uh, other uh, propagation property of the wave. The wave actually is um, a propagating oscillation. Here we have a, a mass connected with a spring. Uh, this box and the spring is oscillating. And suppose there's no friction. And you can find that um, the only uh, force on the box is um, the spring force. We also call this restoring force. And um, the reason we call this force is uh, restoring force uh, is because uh, the displacement and the force are always opponent. So you can check the position and the force. The direction of each of them is uh, opposite. And if the position goes to left, the force goes to right. If the position goes to right, the force goes to left. So the red arrow and the blue arrow are always opponent. And also, if we write down the force formula, the spring force is a function of displacement. So we have F equal to minus Kx. So according to Newton's second law, we know this is a net force. And the net force is equivalent to the Ma. If I know the mass is, is M, the mass of the box is M. So the acceleration is A. And if we write down this as a derivative equation, um, we can write down the acceleration as a second time derivative of displacement. Okay, so this is the uh, um, equation to describe this motion. So we have uh, X as a function of time, then when we write down this function in the equation, m second derivative of x is e plus or is equivalent to minus kx. So what's the result of the x? This is what we are going to solve. We know the x is an oscillation, so that could be a cosine function, or sine function. Yeah, but from this equation, we can guess that there is a function, when we do second derivative, it could be equivalent to itself multiplied by a constant. So that solution should be a cosine function or sine function. So we can just assume the x of function of t is equivalent to the magnitude, the amplitude of the oscillation. I use a to represent the amplitude times a cosine function, then inside the, the function, I have the frequency of the oscillation uh, multiplied by the time. Okay, then let's solve the, uh, the frequency. The frequency is unknown, but it should be determined by the mass and the spring constant. So let me plug in this equation uh, into the, the equation. So here we have mass time second derivative of x that should be a cosine omega t and second derivative so I have a omega square and I should have a minus sign after I do um, derivative twice then I will have a minus sign in front of cosine function. Then this is equivalent to the minus k and x is also a cosine function. Then you will find that the cosine function canceled. 
this and this and so and the minus sign minus sign cancel so we have m the mass multiplied by the frequency square equal to k so we can solve the frequency of the oscillation is square root k over m so this is interesting because the oscillation is a constant oscillation the frequency is a constant and it doesn't depend on the position and so the oscillation only depends on the spring constant and the mass of the box okay this is uh, the solution without friction without friction then we will have uh, oscillation and if i plug the x at the function of time then the, the curve look like this okay and if we want to know the period of the oscillation we can use period is equivalent to one over frequency right this frequency and this frequency has a two pi factor so we use this equal to two pi over omega this is a period and the period is also a constant then if there's a friction what will happen uh, i think you might remember the damping oscillation here you find that uh, if i have a, a mass and uh, connect with a spring but we have to consider the friction of uh, of the air then you can find that um, the amplitude drop down if i have to use another color you can find that the amplitude at the beginning is here so it dropped down this is the exponential decay so if we write down the, the formula of this oscillation that could be an oscillation y y is the oscillation cosine omega t and times uh, exponential decay so that would be the t over time constant so this is oscillation um okay if um in the oscillation i give a driving force and go back to my notes Just now I see this is a damping oscillation. And the curve looks like exponential decay, but that should be an oscillation. Okay. This is uh, the amplitude. You can see this is a y, this is a t. Okay, and now I want to um remove the damping and um, so i give a driven force for example um i give a spring connect the with a box and the box is on the ground so the ground has friction the friction is mu and we know when the time increase the amplitude will decrease but every time when uh, the mass moving to the far right, um, there's a guy to give a push force. So in this case, if we write down the Newton's second law, there would be three force on the, on the mass. One is the spring force. The other is um, a constant force. We can call this as a friction friction will be mu mg uh, this is negative but when uh, there is a guy to give a push force and this force is also an oscillation we can give a plus this constant plus a force this is push force and only when the um, the mass reach to the far right the, the guy give a push so this will be um, a function like this if i write down the force 
this is push for set the time and when this mass goes to far right there's a force and force so this force is periodic so this will be equal to m okay it's a newton second law then in this case the push force provided by this guy is going to uh, defend uh, the damping oscillation. So eventually, um, the mass is always oscillating um, around the equilibrium state. But there is um, a very important case. We know for, for this case, um, the oscillation has an intrinsic frequency. That's equal to k over m. This is intrinsic frequency. If this frequency match the frequency provided by the guy, the frequency I can see this is also a frequency provided by guy matches the frequency of the guy, then I, we will see the resonate, the resonation curve. So in this case, if we check the, uh, the amplitude as a function of time, this is x, then we will find um, the oscillation become large, large, and large. So this is called resonation. And there is a, um, a story happened 100 years ago in the, uh, in the San Francisco. I'll show you a movie. There's a bridge oscillating by the wind. And then this bridge crash. So this is a bridge happened and see. Yeah, this is a bridge and there is a wind um, flow to the right and the left. Then when this bridge goes to the left and you find that that's interesting. Uh, let me so eventually you see this bridge is oscillating because the wind the frequency of the wind matches the frequency of the bridge. Then the crash. Okay, so um, I just show you the, the resonation uh, is dangerous. So we need to avoid this case. Um, okay, so then we will have another topic. If the oscillation, um, is propagating from place one to another place if we will have a wave. So now we have new topic that's a wave. So if the oscillation um, propagates uh, from one place to another place, from A to B, then uh, we call this propagation of oscillation is wave. So in the wave, we have two dimension. One is X, the other is Y. And the wave looks like this. And if you check the point, each point, the point is oscillating. It, it never moves to the left or right. It's just oscillating on the equilibrium position. And then, um, this oscillation could be trouble. I show the, the video. Here, you can see if you check only one point on this string, the string is uh, a wave, and you find that the red uh, points only oscillate uh, in the y direction. It don't, they don't travel in the x direction. So that means um, each point is oscillating, but uh, the oscillation can propagate uh, from one place to another place. So there are two speeds. 
one speed is oscillation speed. If the oscillation um, is uh, very strong, then the speed is very fast. And different points have different oscillation speeds. And the oscillation speed um, change over time, but the direction is in the vertical direction. So we have uh, oscillating speed. Speed in the figure, that's the V. We know the, uh, the oscillation is Y, so we can do the derivative of dy. That will be the derivative of the oscillation cosine omega t. Right? So that will be the minus A omega sine omega t. So this is oscillating speed. You can find that the oscillation speed is a function of time. And this is confined as the magnitude of the speed is amplitude of oscillation times the frequency. But if we check the propagating speed, propagating speed, also this is called traveling speed. That's a C. C is a constant and is equivalent to the wavelength. The wavelength is lambda here, is the, the length from peak to another peak. So that is the wavelength divided by the period of the oscillation. So this is a constant. It doesn't change over time. And we want to know how to, do we get the speed of the, of the wave. And to get the speed of the wave, let's check um, the function of this oscillation. We know at a different point, the oscillation is equivalent to the amplitude times the cosine function. This is uh, oscillation. But different point has different phase. So you see, when the one point go to the peak, the other point is not on the peak. So they should have a phase. The phase I use theta represents the phase. And the total phase is 2 pi. And the phase is a period. And the phase also is a function of x. At different position, they have different phase. And let's check. Uh, the phase, when the phase increase from 0 to 2 pi, we, we know the distance is increased from 0 to 1 wavelength. So if two point has a phase difference of two pi, then the distance uh, between these two points should be one wavelength, is a lambda, right? So if we have this relation, then we can solve um, the phase. The phase over two pi, we know the ratio, should be equivalent to the position over the wavelength. The ratio should be the same. So in this case, uh, we can solve the theta is equivalent to the 2 pi over lambda times x. Okay, so we can replace the theta by using 2 pi over lambda times x. So this is called wave equation or wave function. So let me use my notebook. So we have the y is equivalent to the amplitude multiplied by a cosine function, a frequency time t, plus a phase. The phase is equivalent to 2 pi over lambda times x. So the wave function is equivalent to this. And here we define a new vector define a wave vector is k, 2 pi over lambda. This is a definition. And the definition says um, k equal to 2 pi over lambda. So we can replace this guy by using a wave vector. And let's see, if this is a vector, 
they should have a, a direction. The direction of wave vector, okay, is the direction of the traveling speed. Of the traveling. So if you travel to the right, then the wave vector go to the right. So they are parallel. Okay. So if we want to know the speed of the traveling, the traveling speed or the wave speed, we can use uh, wavelengths divided by the period. Also, we know the period is equivalent to the 2 pi over the frequency and the lambda is equivalent to the 2 pi over wave vector. Right? So we have another equation to um, write this equation that is omega frequency over k. So that means if we see a function, a wave function is equivalent to cosine omega t plus kx, then we can get the traveling speed is equivalent to omega over k. Joseph, sorry, I'm just a little confused because you said it's in the direction of the traveling speed, but then you used v, which I thought was the oscillating speed. Uh, this is the traveling speed, not the oscillating speed. Okay. The oscillating speed is the derivative of the oscillation. So that will be A times cosine this one. This is the oscillating speed. And you can find that the oscillation speed is not a constant. Okay. So one more thing about the wave is called wave equation. I think you might have problem to solve the, the learning homework. Um, so the, if you have very difficult learning homework, when you check a solution and you still confuse how to do that. Um, in, the, in the wave equations, we will see uh, if we see a function like this, a derivative of function of t multiply a constant plus or minus, minus or plus, doesn't matter, um, a derivative of the x is equivalent to zero, then we can see this equation is a wave and the solution will be this and the speed is equivalent to hold on let me use another another vector so i use a constant number for example uh, the number is called a uh, number times this one so the speed is one over square root of this number i'll tell you why so if we do second derivative of the wave function, a cosine omega t plus kx, we do second derivative y and over t. We will have a minus sign in front of the function, cosine t plus kx. Then we will have a omega square, get out. And if we do second derivative of x, we will still have the minus a cosine omega t plus kx. Then we will have a k square get out. And we know the speed of the traveling is equivalent to the omega over k. So we can use the first equation divided by the second equation. So on the left, I will have the second derivative ratio. On the right, you see the cosine function uh, cancel. This cancel, this cancel, so we only have omega square and k square. So we have c square. Then I multiply this 
to the right, I will have derivative times c square like this. Then I move to the left, I will have this one minus c square dx square equal to zero. So when you see this equation like this, we do second derivative of time and we do second derivative of x and they multiply a constant in front. Then this is called a wave equation because the solution of the y is a wave, wave equation. And the speed of the wave is a square root of the number in front of the second derivative of x. And if you check the uh, Maxwell's equation, you will get a similar result. Maxwell's equation is oscillation of electric field. So eventually when you do the derivation, you will have electric field. We we'll do the second derivative of time and minus one over epsilon mu nu also second derivative of x. This is equal to zero. And the same thing, if we do derivative of magnetic field, we will get the similar result. So that's why we see the speed of the light is one over square root epsilon mu. Okay. Hey. So this is uh, the wave. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the interaction between two waves. We call the interaction as interference. Interaction of two in counting wave. Okay. When I have two waves and these two waves encountered in the space, um, the amplitude could be uh, added or subtracted. So if they, they meet at the same position and these two waves have the same face, This is wave one, this is wave two. If they have the same phase, they will have constructive interference. So the, eventually the amplitude of these two waves will get a very big amplitude of the wave. So we call this constructive interference. And if these two waves are out of phase, they have 180 degree out of phase. Like this. Then when you add them, the peak meets the trough. The trough meets the peak. So eventually you will get a very weak oscillation. So we call this destructive interference. <clears throat> so an, an interesting example you can see in the um, in the experiment is this one. And if we have two wave. So there are two generators, and these two generators generate waves, and these two waves interfere. So eventually you will find some position has a very big oscillation. So this blue line represents a very huge oscillation. Oh. And if you check other place, like this place, there's no oscillation. The red line, see, 
is no oscillation. So that means this position um, has a destructive interference. And let's see, how can we find a formula to, um, to measure the distance from one position to another position? I want to know the difference or the distance between two destructive um, interference and between two constructive interference. I have a video to show. Um, there is a wave and I use two holes to generate two source. So each hole could be treated as a source, so a wave source. So one source generates a wave. The other source also generates uh, the wave. And these two waves have the same amplitude, same uh, wavelength, and the same phase. But when they travel at a different position, for example, if I put here, um, this position has two waves, one wave from the first source, the other wave from the second source. And the traveling distance from each source to this position are different. So the, the distance is different. L1 doesn't equal to L2. So the phase traveling to this position, theta 1 doesn't equal to phase 2. So if we say the wavelengths look like this, and there are one wavelength, two wavelengths, and a half. So there are 2.5 wavelengths. And if you check this one, one wavelength, second wavelength, third one, and the fourth one. So the distance equivalent to four wavelengths. So eventually you will find at this position, uh, the, the distance are different. So that means um, the phase at this position from each source are different. So if the phase difference, if the phase difference are uh, equivalent to zero, two pi, four pi, or any two pi times an integer. That means um, the difference of this two wave from first source to second source are equivalent to zero, two pi, four pi, or any two pi times an integer. We call this two oscillation is in phase. It's two oscillation in phase, but if the phase difference is equivalent to pi, three pi, five pi, or pi plus two pi times the integer, that means these two waves are out of phase, and the degree of out of phase is 180 degree, is pi. So in this case, if the phase difference is equivalent to this, then you will find a destructive interference. But if the phase difference is two pi times integer, this is a constructive interference. This is destructive. <coughs> okay, so let's write down the equation. We can assume this is a light, the light wave traveling this way, then we use a screen in front. On the screen, you will find an interference pattern. At some position, you see a constructive and a stable interference. And at some place, you see a destructive but stable interference. And you can also find that as the distance between two constructive and the two destructive pattern are periodic. So the distance between them are equivalent. So we can uh, measure it and find the relation of this distance with the wavelength, with um, the separation of these two holes, and also the distance from the holes to the screen. This L, this is E, and the wavelength is lambda. Okay, let's figure out the relation. If I have two holes,
and each hole generates a wave on the screen. And the distance is L1, the distance is L2. L1 minus L2 is light path difference. Okay. If the light path difference divided by the wavelength times 2 pi is equivalent to the 2 pi times the integer, then we will have a constructive pattern. And let's see, the two pi and two pi cancel. So if the distance, uh, the light path difference is equivalent to the wavelength times the integer, then we will have a constructive pattern. And from the, uh, the geometry, we can confirm the distance is a function of the separation the distance from the hole to the screen and the distance from the center of screen to the position of the pattern, this is x. And you can confirm that delta L is a function of B x over L. Okay, you can confirm in mathematics. Okay, then we can plug this formula into the equation. We will have dx over L is equivalent to lambda times n, the integer. Then we will get uh, the distance from the center of the screen to the pattern x is equivalent to the lambda times L over D times the integer. Okay, and if we have many constructive pattern this, then the distance between them um, are equivalent because one constructive pattern is equal to n, the other is equivalent to n plus one. So if the distance, uh, the phase difference is two pi, then this one has a phase difference is four pi. And we have the third one the difference is three pi, of the six pi, then we will have n plus two. So when you subtract them, you will get a, a distance between two constructive patterns is equivalent to lambda L over D. So that means if you increase the wavelength or increase the distance, increase the distance or increase the wavelength, you will increase the distance between two patterns. And if you decrease the separation, you narrow the, the two holes, then you can also increase the, uh, the, in, the distance between two patterns. So this is how we uh, find the pattern. And we have the, uh, the simulation to show you how does this happen. So I have a simulation. So you can find that. I have a wavelength 300 nanometer, the separation is 0.5 millimeter, and the distance from the, the source to the screen is 0.5 meter. And we can uh, simulate this one, we get the interference pattern. At this position, you see the constructive, you have the maximum intensity, and destructive, you have zero intensity. And also, we can increase the wavelength, we double the wavelength to see what happened. You see the distance increase. And we can uh, also increase the separation. Then we will narrow the periodicity. Okay, so this is a, a very interesting interference. And we use this interference to can measure the wavelength of the light because we can measure the separation, then if we don't know the wavelength, we can use the equation to solve the wavelength. This is the application. So um, I think I've done today. We have 10 minutes, then let's do the quiz. So the quiz you can find on the course site, um, on the quiz 11.
you can see um, under my name. And after you finish the quiz, please upload uh, your solution to here. Okay, so that's all.